Islam is in a very real sense uh, the product of its own historical self-understanding. Very quickly the idea developed and became part of the received historical self-understanding in Islam that the political success of Islam was the result of its religious superiority, that relig its religious perfection was the basis, was enabled, was the source of its political success and strength, and that its political strength and success was the vindication and proof of its religious superiority. Uh, when one talks about what is Islam or what isn't it, are there Islamic political attitudes? Uh, these days people go back and say, what's in the Quran, that's the Quran. When that is a really a very simple-minded way to go about it. One has to deal with a whole historical mindset, a set of attitudes, a template, a worldview that was slowly engendered and built up and sedimented within Islamic civilization, the civilization born of that faith, and a civilization that justified itself in terms of that faith. Well, Islam is, Islam is based upon uh, this notion that ultimately, that in principle, the political order and the religious order are one. And that's why, if you look at, you know, why is Osama bin Laden and now ISIS, you know, they're on about the Crusaders and the Zionists. I mean, the Crusades live on as the, the Crusades are not just then, the Crusades are now in this political imagination. The beginning of the turning point of this was, of course, with, when Napoleon, with Napoleon's conquest of Egypt and um, the forces of Islam went under, uh, the Islamic order went under, there was this new Napoleonic presence, the power of Europe, the Enlightenment, the military, technological, the scientific forces um, that proved vastly superior. And from that time, the world of Islam began to say, what has gone wrong? A process, a period of cognitive dissonance began, which has still not been overcome. In many ways, uh, the world of Islam was not just a victim of European power, but they were exemplary of the adverse experience of the non-European world at the pointy end of coercive modernity. The force of this fact uh, is clear to many Muslims if it's not clear to us and it has not gone away. Islam is in many ways a wounded civilization. There's a profound sense that history has gone wrong. That they have been, that Islam and Muslims have been divinely vouchsafed and guaranteed a future, an ability to live on their own terms, and they can no longer do it. In parentheses, one of the, the problems that we have of, of integration of Muslims in society such as Australia is that you have by and large minority Muslim communities that are still trying to engage with the non-Muslim world through the prism, through the lens, through the mindset of governmentalist majoritarian Islam. The problem, in other words, uh, is not uh, that we have now with IS. It's not that there's some terrible thing of radicalization going on, we have to find the right gimmick of de-radicalization. The problem is a fundamental problem of debate of having a, an adequate debate about the future of Islam in a non-exclusively Islamic world that Muslims will be part of and that they are prepared to engage, to be part of, dialogically with their non-Muslim fellow citizens. There is a rage with, against history, a sense among uh, militant Muslims, a sense that they hold explicitly and that they act upon that is not just theirs, it is a sense that is pervasive within the world of Islam that somehow or other history has gone wrong and it, it needs to be or might be set right in forms of distinctively Islamic political action. That underlying mindset is to be seen throughout the world of Islam. It is acted out, it is written about in ideological forms by militant Muslims. It is acted out by violent jihadi Muslims. But it is a mindset that is not just characteristic of them, if you set aside across the whole religious spectrum and continuum the 10 or 15% of Muslims who are liberals, sceptical, sceptical modernists, uh, that is in a subdued form the mindset of ordinary, orthodox, conventional Muslims everywhere. Which is why um, it is pointless to get up and ask Muslim, the leaders of Muslim communities to take a stand against military Islam because they don't have a separate independent ground on which to stand. They see the world and history in the same way. They just don't take it so seriously and act upon it so strenuously.